Welcome back, Bird Dog family. Today, I'm going to talk with you really quick and show you how I've made my rabbit boxes. If you like what I'm doing here, don't forget to hit the like button, obviously. Subscribe if you want to. It's totally free to subscribe. Hit the little notification bell, and that basically just keeps you up to date to when I post a video. You guys will be the first to know because you're subscribed to the channel. Once again, 100% free. And it actually helps me out here with Bird Dog Outdoors YouTube channel. So greatly appreciate it to all the ones that I've already subscribed and to the new subscribers coming along. And you guys who are watching this video, go ahead and subscribe if you like to. Also, drop a comment. Say, hey, Jerry, the box looks like crap or it might work, it might not work, whatever. Just jump in the comments, leave me a comment and share the video with your friends. It's greatly appreciated. Basically, I've seen the design made before, and I uh, just decided to recreate my own. But uh, for you guys who like to watch my videos, here we go. I'll show you what all you need. I'll show you how I put it together. So a rabbit box is basically a trap to catch rabbits during trapping season. Rabbits and other creatures, they know if you are using something that is not so seasoned and when i mean seasoned i'm talking about something that's been outdoors in the elements for quite some time if you go to the store and you buy fresh lumber you might not be so successful so what i did is i gathered some pallet wood basically i deconstructed the pallets they have been sitting out in the weather for some time so they're sun beaten they've been rained on they're not brand new fresh wood and these are just pine pallets. I prefer to find ones with wider slats, such as this. These are about uh, five and three quarter, maybe five and a half inch wide. Sometimes you'll get pallets that have the smaller boards. Those just won't cut it. They're not wide enough or they wouldn't even be tall enough if you were using them for sidewalls. After you deconstruct your pallet, you wanna take and figure out what size you wanna make your box. So these sides here were cut at, at 27 inches and I marked them. And obviously I got enough to do several boxes because if you're tearing apart pallets and you're cutting wood, you might as well do enough to make a few. So here's my tops cut down to 27 inches, sides 27 inches. And here's my bottom at 34 inches. Some of the tools I'll use is a drill and a driver. And I'm using some exterior screws. I happened upon these in an estate sale. I got them for super cheap. These are number eights, inch and a quarter long. <clears throat> the drill, I'm using a bit where I can drill a pallet hole as well as uh, this is a countersink type of bit. So that really helps out so that you don't split your wood when you start drilling in the ends of it. That way you can sink your screw in, but you don't split those ends of your board, okay? Another thing you're gonna need is a circular saw or a skill saw, whatever you like to call it, wherever you're from. This is my saw here. It does perfect for cutting up some wood. You'll need a tape measure and you'll need a straight edge. Square is better, obviously, so that you know you're making your cuts square. Also, I'm using a handful of uh, clamps. So what I do is I start with my 34 inch bottom or whatever number you decide you wanna use. And I have a 27 inch side. And I go ahead and I put two clamps on it to hold it in place. Got an airplane flying over. Once I get that clamped, I pre-drill wherever I want my screws at and I'm just doing three per side, one at the front, one in the middle, and one at the back. Okay, once that is drilled, I screw it together with my hardware. Then I can take these clamps off and I do the other side. I put another side plate on it. After that side plate is on and screwed in place, then I would grab a top plate. And obviously I would do the same process to attach my side plate. 
Once that is all done, we have something like this, okay? This is a box that's probably roughly three quarters of the way done. We have a top plate, both sides and a bottom. After that, you're ready to build your door and put some mesh on the back. There's my tennis ball I was testing my uh, trigger with, okay? I used the cheapest um, hinge that I could find at Lowe's. This little small hinge was on clearance rack, so I bought a pack. In order for this door to close quick enough, you're gonna need to add some weight. So I doubled up on my wood panel and I also added a piece of rebar that I attached to the door just to give it some weight. This metal wire is just a coat hanger and it is designed to keep this door from coming open if there is a rabbit in this trap. So I can depress that and open this door. My trigger is made out of a piece of wood that I carved, I think they call that a bird's mouth. I carved uh, a notch in it, since I don't know the exact terminology. And I also um, put an area at the top for the wire so to stay. Drilled a hole in the top of my box and I can set that piece of wood that I carved and it is now my trigger. So once this box is set, we'll test it with this. Little bunny rabbit comes along and he'll go in, he'll hit that trigger, the door shuts, he can't get out. It's pretty much that simple. Hope you guys like it. Uh, this was the first one I made. The next one, I may put the hole a little further back and make the uh, arm here a lot, a little bit longer. Obviously, if it's too long, you got the weight of the stick thrown off the balance and just making that door really slow. So I made this one shorter and I drilled the hole where I did. Hopefully, a full-size rabbit can get in there and trigger it and the door shut and he's trapped. Otherwise, if the door is half open and he's half in, I won't have a rabbit. So we'll see how this box performs. The next box or the next few boxes, I'll probably put the hole just a little bit further back so that I give him more room to get in the box before the trigger is set off. That is all I have for you guys today. Once again, this is Jerry at Bird Dog Outdoors. Be good or be good at it. You guys have a great one.